It is time. Time to speak my goddamn truth. I'm tired of adaptations. I'm tired of their garbage. A few were fine, but every year it's just reboot this, reboot that, reboot this. What's next? A live action emoji movie. <laughs> but I'm just about done. Hollywood has adapted works of fiction, older films, biographies, history, everything that has ever happened. But honestly, I think I'm just taking it too far. It's not all bad. Sometimes, sometimes, just sometimes, there's a show or a movie that adapts something so masterfully that I have to go to my penthouse and freak it. <laughs> I think there's a writing problem with reboots. I believe there's a serious writing trap when trying to adapt a game into a visual media. In this video, I wanna do a comparison of The Last of Us and Fallout and do a little exploring, a little contrasting, a little comparing. There's gonna be spoilers ahead, so if you haven't seen either, um, out. There's the door. There's the door. We're staying. Get spoiled if, if you're into that. I sound fucking disgusting. Let's get into it. I love The Last of Us. I love it too much. I love it unreasonably so. You're kidding me! The games, safe to say I've played each of them like four times. I'm not even joking. I beat the hardest difficulty in both. Would you like some fresh fruit? And then I took it further. I was masochistic enough to play all of The Last of Us Part Two in grounded mode, the hardest fucking mode, with no guns once. And I would do it again. Why? Because I like game. It's safe to know that I know these games like the back of my hand. With the franchise being so successful, it's no surprise that it got adapted by some streaming service. The source material offers a lone cub and wolf trope featuring Joel and Ellie, a lone grief-stricken man and an immune optimistic young girl that must journey to Boston to make the cure that will save humanity. You know what they did? They played both sympathy and empathy cards on you, which is great if your cold, dark heart needs a little microwaving every once in a while, like mine. It's safe to say I love it. Found family tropes usually do that to me. And the show tries to replicate that, not just by giving us a deeper understanding of the characters from the game, but also giving us more footage for the Pedro Pascal edits on TikTok. And not shocking at all, the show did great in terms of ratings, but it didn't do it for me. And I'm gonna tell you why. What made the Last of Us game so remarkably special is that it felt more so like an interactive movie experience. And it remains as such. I believe it stands as a genre defining game. The games already pack a punch with their gameplay, visuals, voice, and motion acting, all wrapped into a delicious, perfect little package. <laughs> not fair. So they have all the material right there. What stops it from being great? Well, taking on the challenge of adapting a video game is considerably more difficult than a book because games are solely about their interactivity. Telling stories through interactivity is essentially what defines games, whether that be point and click, first person, third person, you name it, whatever you want. Then imagine taking away the interactivity of the story. There's still a skeletal remain of the story, but it's not fully formed. It won't be as engaging as it was when it was a game. It won't form knots in your throat. There will be lower stakes. A fine example of this being the lack of action in the show, the lack of encounters with infected. I'm not sure if it was a budget thing, but it really took away from the tension that the game brought to the table. And also from a little bit of the world building. I mean, you're supposed to be in a zombie apocalypse for God's sakes. Personally, I thought it lacked and the standout moments in the show for me were surprisingly those that deviated from the game itself. In some bits, I even found myself not interested because I knew what was going to happen. That is to say, I feel like the HBO rework of the show did a disservice to the community that really built up the game's success for them. I mean, us the gamers. I'm sure a lot of people didn't feel the way I do, but I didn't particularly enjoy it as a longtime fan of the series. Part of why this show got adapted in the first place was because it was so well received critically. I don't hate change. I like to welcome change where it's due. I want to focus on one aspect that completely changed one of the main parts of the source material itself. That being the spore infested rooms or areas. The fact that this got completely taken out of the HBO show made me want to f him. Ah! God damn it! Taking that out of the show specifically takes away from some of the most important character details for Ellie. 
somewhat of an internal struggle that she has to go through. If all you've done is watch the show, then I'm gonna go into a little bit of game detail here from the games, specifically from part two. So if you don't wanna hear it, skip to this. Yeah, There are full levels of spore-infested rooms in both The Last of Us games, where the main characters have to wear masks. Ellie can breathe spores in the game. Ellie's big reveal about being immune to Dina was just that, her mask breaking. Ellie, your mask! Here, we can share mine. No, no, no! no. Don't take what? it! Stop! What? Dina, stop! Ellie, stop! What? No! Ellie, no! Stop! I'm not infected! I'm immune! I'm not coughing, do you see? <sighs> Fuck. Dina. Shit. We also see her in an instance discussing it with Joel in a flashback, specifically wanting to take her mask off in spore infested places because she sees no use in keeping it on for just him. And he insists that it's important to keep it on. It is a present part of Ellie's life. You took away a detail from the world? I mean, why? When both could have been present within the show. I see no reason to exclude one because it doesn't make sense to you. Dude, you have spaghetti coming out of people's mouths. I I see why you'd want to make it a semi-accurate show or something, but buddy, you're making a zombie TV show. Get your head out of your ass. Oh, wait, you're not making a zombie TV show? Then what are you making? That isn't to say I hate the show. Not at all, actually. I enjoyed watching it. It still moved me. It still hit the same marks in the same places and in some other things. It amplified emotional beats for me. The show has some truly great character moments and a lot of heart. It expands on things that we don't really get the time to explore within the confines of the game in a meaningful way. And I think that those details that were included would work in game. There's a strong effort to pay homage to the source material and it shows. And it does a great job for the most part. At the end of the day, it's about what's best for TV though. It's to make it as easy to understand as possible to newcomers of this world. It just feels one-sided. I felt cucked. You wanna know what show didn't make me feel cucked? I played only one Fallout game. It was Fallout 4. All of this just works. It's not, I'm not kidding. And I kind of watched the rest. I learned things, I read things, I adapted. I, I know the gist. The Fallout show though, follows the lives of three characters. Lucy McLean is a vault dweller in search of her father in a brand new world to her. Lucy's journey is one of self-discovery and survival. She faces the dangers of the new world while trying to protect those she cares about while protecting her values. Cooper Howard, the ghoul is an enigmatic, charismatic, badass motherfucker. As a ghoul, he has been physically altered by radiation, giving him a unique perspective on the wasteland's horrors. I mean, he's been here longer than anyone. His background also serves to give us context clues as to what happened before the bombs fell. As a figurehead for the vault's marketing and directly related to one of the people in charge of it. Not directly related, I mean, lawfully related. They were married. Maximus is a squire within the Brotherhood of Steel, a military organization. He is driven by a sense of duty and desire to prove himself within the Brotherhood after being accused of sabotaging a recently promoted friend. These play crucial roles in educating us about this world's state, the past and the present of it, and its political state. And all of these characters flourish so effortlessly because of one thing. You take a world that's already been developed, and boom, baby, you add your own spice to it. You give it your own flavor. That flavor being three characters. Those are the best kinds of stories. It's like having a pre-existing wasteland sandbox just ready for you to bring new life into it. There's a beauty in the Fallout games too, where the protagonists of the games are, for the most part, separate people with only some of them having minor connections between them. And I'm so glad that it followed that exact pattern. This allows for the writers Geneva RD and Graham Wagner to put their own spin on a vault dweller coming to the wasteland for the first time, showing us a knight's origins and a ghoul's tortured past. We underestimate the importance of world and character relation. Getting the right mix of character development and world building is key for a great show. Characters are the heart of the story, making us care and giving us someone to cheer for or root against. 
Without good characters, even the most badass, intricately designed world can feel empty, like in The Last of Us HBO adaptation. That heavily relies on character, but a well-built world adds well-built characters, and a well-built character reflects a well-built world. When a show balances both well, we get invested in the characters and fascinated by the world they live in. I was also surprised that they utilized many in-game items, of course, the weapons, but not just that, also the food, the in-game musical identity, the creatures. They were as faithful to the source material without sticking their heads up their own asses. What I mean by that is the show wasn't afraid to dig at the source material. It wasn't afraid to show the ridiculousness of it. What truly stuck out to me about Fallout was that it didn't take itself too seriously. The balance of dark humor and video game logic, satire, great characters, and a really awesome concept trailing three different people at once was just mwah, so good. It did Fallout justice. It did it right. That's how video game to TV or movie adaptations should be. The Last of Us lacked this balance. The Last of Us as a show lacked this balance because it's not an environment that you can live in. It's not an environment that you can interact with. It's not an environment that you're present in, like you're present with the games, with the characters, with their dialogue, with everything that they say. We only experience what we are shown in, well, the show. I felt like it was lackluster. I felt like a lot of the beats fell off because of that specific thing. It's just that you can't replicate a state of fear and anxiety within a show that you have in a game, right? You can only sort of change it, alter it. I felt like if they would have made a Last of Us spin-off, same world, you know, build it, make it, new story, new people, I felt like that would have been so much better. Following in sort of like Fallout's footsteps, even though one came before the other. That's what I would have enjoyed a lot more. Character-wise, greatly developed, but it was just, bah, you know? Not joking, not joking. The power has gone out twice since I started recording this video, twice. And it's delayed my whole operation, my whole day, like by 40 minutes. And I am so, so frustrated. But this video shall survive, it shall prevail, it shall continue, so. Let's get on with the outro. This is the third time I've had to record this outro. So I'm going to do it again because I, I love you. So bottom line is if adaptations will continue to be made, this is a prime example of how to do just that. Also, big studios might benefit from exploring new original narratives. I don't know. Is it too much to fucking ask for you guys to make something brand new to foster new ideas and innovation in the entertainment industry? Honestly, like genuinely, like the other day I went to go see a movie, uh, an original movie. Because I was like, I'm so tired of these fucking reboots. And I went and I saw a movie, a real movie at that, in a real movie theater. It was Russell Crowe. And uh, it's a movie called Sleeping Dogs. And it's probably one of the worst movies I've ever seen. So I don't, I don't even know what I want anymore, honestly. At this point, I'll just write my own fucking movie. I'll just, I'll just make my own fucking movie. What do you think about that? I'll make my own fucking movie with my own brain. What would I even make a movie about? So just let me know what you think. Let me know what you think about all this. Let me know if I should write a movie. Let me know if you agree, if you disagree. Let me know if you uh, thought it was cool. Put a red heart if you want to become friends. Put a purple heart if we're already friends. Put a pink heart if you have a crush on me, which I doubt. Put a black heart if you want me to die. Yep. Thank you so much. Bye.